first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pilot man which have produced this black chemical called melon. <laughs> Peace, peace. You back once again with Dr. Aileen Bay. All right, hit me up. Y'all can definitely hit me out there. You want to know for sure because we've been having technical difficulties. All right, so what we're going to get into tonight is basically on the conspiracies. All right, um, we got our war cons- um, correspondent, um, Brother Big Man. Um, of course, there's no one who can take the place of Brother Dell Jones. You know, however, you know, um, the legacy must continue on. So we have our own war correspondent, and that's Brother Big Man, and he's on here tonight with us. Brother Big Man, can you hear us? Peace. Peace. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. Uh, right. Getting some of my t- material together. Right, right. Trying Absolutely. to uh, help the brothers and sisters out there. No doubt. You've always been doing that, and we appreciate you for that long dedication. All right, we're going to get into, um, basically, I guess you can say the Black Panther Party and more conspiracies, like the current events in which that is taking place, like with um, Hugo Chavez, we're going to get into that, um, if it's possible in which that he was assassinated, as well as also um, the dethroning of the Pope and Queen Isabel, um, um, Elizabeth. So we're going to get into that information tonight, too. Um Let's see what we can get at first here, Brother Big Man. What you got for us? You got anything for us right now? Well, uh, I came upon some information. Uh, when, we, when we were talking about the autobiography of Malcolm X, right, uh, done by Alex Haley on February the 20th, uh, normally when I buy books, I buy more than one copy the years might go by, and I buy an, another copy of the same book. Right. So in 1965, I bought a autobiography of Malcolm X, and when I turn to page 418, I'm going to read this, and I want the audience to tell me what they get out of it. Now this is Alex Haley talking. In Washington, D.C., and in New York, at least powerful civic 
and private and government agencies and individuals were keenly interested in what Malcolm X was saying abroad and were speculating upon what would he say when he came back, when he returned to America. In upstate New York, I received a telephone call from a close friend. He doesn't say who that close friend is. Right. Who said he received a telephone call from a close friend. He had been asked, he asked me if I would come to New York City on our appointed day to meet with a very high government official who was interested in Malcolm X. I did fly down to the city. My friend accompanied me to the office of a large private foundation well known for his activities and donations in the civil rights area. That foundation might be the Carnegie Foundation. It might be the Rockefeller Foundation. Right. Based on what Steve Coakley um, told me, it was the Ford Foundation. Okay, the Ford Foundation. Mm -hmm. I met the foundation's president, and he, he introduced me to a Justice Department civil rights section head, Bert Marshall. Marshall was chiefly interested in Malcolm X's finances, particularly how his extensive travel in Africa since his black Muslim ouster had been paid for. I told him that, to the best of my knowledge, the several payments from the publisher had financed Malcolm X along with his fees he received from some of his speeches and possibly donations that his organization received and that Malcolm X had told me of borrowing money from his sister, Ella. Now follow me where I'm going with this for the current trip. And recently, the Saturday Evening Post had bought the uh, right of the book for a subliminal uh, amount of money. Now, that 1965 autobiography, page 418. Right. In the version 1999, what I just read is not in the book. Right, exactly. And Malcolm X's oldest daughter does the introduction on the new book. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, what's up with that? Why did she allow them to take that page out? Why did they take the page out? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, Good question. this is why when Malcolm X was assassinated on February 21st, two. Uh, 1965, the first edition of the New York Times said it was two assassins, and the, the next day they said it was one. That's right. Okay. And now, according uh, to reports, the second person actually was Gene Roberts. And of what's course, that again? Um, um, the second person actually was Gene Roberts. Okay. Right, that's who that second person was allegedly, um, who that actually was, was Gene Roberts. So, after they found out that he was part of Boss, you know, which was, um, of course, the New York Police um, special squad of, um, you know, spy informants and um, agents, um, they released him. Because he was, because allegedly, according to Gene Roberts, he actually shot at, um, Hagen. Yeah. And he was the one who supposedly shot him in the leg, allegedly. Okay. So they was the two in which that was arrested at that time. But of course, Gene Roberts' name was removed, um, you know, of course, because he was part of Ball. Right. Mm hmm. 
Now, when you talk about the Black Panther Party, right? Uh, a good brother, I think he's in North Carolina, sent me a book, uh, The Assassination of Fred Hampton. Right. How the FBI and the Chicago police murdered a Black Panther. And that's one of the books. I have several books here that I'm going to, later on, I'm going to, call out for the brothers and sisters to get these books because eventually these books are going to disappear. Right. And that, but, that, was uh, by Jeffrey, that was by Jeffrey Haas. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's one thing in here I was looking at and uh, they, had, they had Fred Hampton as the number one on the hit, they call it the hit parade. Right. You know? Right. And all that was a part of the COINTELPRO. And the same uh, Negro, uh, O'Neill, who drew up the blueprints to the apartment. Right, exactly. Gave Fred Hampton the, I think it was Kool-Aid with lace with some type of... Uh, sleeping element in it to put him to sleep exactly. where he would have been defenseless, you know, and mm-hmm. they came in there and just shot him down, shot him down, shot Mark Clark down, and just shot up the whole apartment, you know? That's, that's right. You want to add anything to that, brother? Well, there's some other books I want to get in, The Agents of Repression, The Secret Wars Against the Black Panthers and the American Indian Movement by Ward Church um, Hill and um, Jim Battle um, Battle War. Um, that's another book, as well as also I have another one here. Hopefully, it goes along with yours. The Cointel Pro: The FBI Secret War on Political Freedom by Nelson Blackstock. Yeah, that was one of the first books dealing with Cointel Pro. Right. And so, um, you know, we want to get into some of this history about the Black Panthers, originally called the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, uh, which was basically, you know, um, a so-called black revolutionary socialist organization that was organized here um, within the so-called United States within, um, I think it was from, what, 1966. It was October the 15th, 1966. Um, it was founded in Oakland, California by, of course, Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seals. Um and, of course, the organization set forth a doctrine calling primarily for the protection of, um, you know, black neighborhoods from police brutality. You know, and that's how they basically got started. And, um, of course, the organization's, you know, official newspaper, the Black Panther, was first circulated in 1967. And also that year, the Black Panthers marched on California State Capitol in Sacramento. Of course, everybody will remember that from the Panthers movie. Um, and by 1968, the party had expanded into many different cities throughout the United States. Among them was Baltimore, Boston, Chicago, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Kansas City, Los Angeles, Newark, New Jersey, New Orleans, New York City, or um, um, Omaha, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle, Washington, D.C., amongst others. And then, I guess, basically, like, their peak membership was near, like, 10,000 by 1969. So within three years, they already had a membership of over 10,000. And then newspaper under the, um, you know, under the, I guess, editorial leadership of um, Eldridge Cleaver, you know, had circulated, you know, basically the circulation of 250,000. Right. You know, so, so, of course, we know that the group created a 10-point program, a document in which that called for land, bread, housing. Um, education, clothing, justice, and peace, as well as the exemption from, you know, um, from the military and the conscription um, for, you know, um, you know, taxes for, you know, so-called um, blacks as well as others, you know, and with right. this point program, basically um, is what we want, what we believe, that was the motto. And, of course, they spoke about, the, you know, they had, like, I think it was, like, 26 rules in which that basically, you know, they utilized on a daily basis. And these rules was basically, like, for drugs, um, not to use drugs, alcohol, 
and their actions while they was working, almost all of the rules had to do with um, basically with only the actions of members. You know, while they yeah. were in events or yeah. meetings, you know what I'm saying, of black of the Black Panthers. In other words, if you're doing Black Panther work, you can't do any of these particular things. And the rules also said that the members had to follow the 10-point program. Right. And of course, the original 10-point yeah. program came from um, October the 1966. And basically, the first one was, we want freedom. We want power to determine the destiny of our black community. You know, um... Number two was, we want full employment for our people. Uh-huh. Number three was, we want an end to robbery by the white man of the black community. Number four, we want decent housing fit for shelter of human beings. Um, five, we want education for our people that exposes the true nature of this descent African American society. Excuse me. We want education that teaches us our true history and our role in present day society. Six, we want all black men to be exempt from military service. Seven, we want an immediate end to police brutality and murder of black people. Nine, from eight, we want freedom for all black men held in federal, state, county, and city prisons and jails. Nine, we want all black um, people who brought to the child to be tried in court by the jury of their peers groups and people from their black community as we found about the Constitution of the United States. Ten, we want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, and just and peace. And as our major political objective, a United Nations supervised plebiscite to be held yeah. in black colonies in which our black colonial subjects will be allowed to participate for the purpose of determining the will of black people as we did destiny. Of course, that's the one in which that rarely get any um, play out of the 10 point program. You know? yeah, yeah, brother, the sound, your sound is a little uh, static. Everything is all right on your end? Yes, everything is all right on my end. Can you hear me better? Well, on my end, it's like a little static. Well, you sound good. But, but can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good. Okay, uh, another thing about the uh, Black Panther Party uh, that a lot of people might know, some might not know, is that although the Black Panther Party believed in self-defense arming themselves against whoever attacked them, some of the most important programs had nothing to do with guns. The, some of the most important programs dealt with feeding the people, making sure the people had proper medical care, making sure the people had clothes to wear. You know what I'm saying? That's those right. Brothers were not only, those brothers and sisters were not only patrolling the streets and making sure the police stayed in line they were feeding the people. They were clothing the people. They were taking care of the people. You know what I'm saying? That's right. This is why the people love the Black Panther Party. That's right. How are you going to hate somebody that's, that's feeding you? That's right. So, in fact, um, they did the first uh, free breakfast program in which the schools stayed on over and began to um, start dictating. That came from the Black Panther Party. Uh, another thing is that the United States government took the Black Panther Party's program as far as free lunch and used it in the American system. That's right. So uh, the people in power are what you call blood suckers. Anything that they see is successful, first they will try to demonize it and then take it and use it, switch it up, change it up, and then call it their own. That's right. So the Black Panther Party, and another thing, uh, it was a group. I think down in Lyles County, County that used that symbol of the Black 
Panther before the Black Black Panther Party even used it. That's right. So um 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 Stokely Carmichael spoke spoke about it. Who called me to Ray? Right, right. Uh, one thing I want to do, which I always do, is it's just going to take maybe a minute. I like to thank the ancestors for giving me the the power, the spirit to do what I'm doing at the age of, I call it still young, 66. I'll be 67 in uh, April. But I thank the ancestors. I thank all my real great friends, sisters and brothers who have helped me through the years and are helping me right now. So I want to get that out of the way. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Yes, sir. You can go on, brother. Well, I just wanted to get back to this um this TIFF objective because this is very powerful. You know, that we want land, you know, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, and peace. And as our major political objective, a United Nations supervised plebiscite to be held throughout the black colony in which only black colonial subjects would be allowed to participate for the purpose of determining the will of black people as to their national destiny. That that is very deep. You know, that that is one of the deepest ones because that means that all of the nineteen sixties um, individuals was actually moving towards um, having to go before the United Nations. That is something on which that is rarely spoken of. You know, know that Martin spoke about the fact that we are now moved out, um, out of the confines of the Constitution and we're moved into human rights. Malcolm stated that you, um, Malcolm stated that you can't have human rights you know, you can't, um, until you are seen as, as a human being. So why are you fighting for civil rights? When you're made right. as a human being. So, you know, Michael spoke about that, and he also spoke about the fact of going before the United Nations and showing forth the atrocities of the United, you know, of the um, United States and how to, you know, try to get the um, Asians and the Latinos on our side so we can throw our weight around because we actually control two-thirds of the United Nations. Right. You know, and this is right here within the 10-point um, program. You know, they speak of the same objective. Now, of course, when you go to the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People from the United Nations, basically everything in which that is put within the 10-point program is actually embedded inside of the 46 articles within the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. And we are the most indigenous people on the planet. So this right here correlates perfectly to what is going on right now and us actually utilizing the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People in order to show forth and um, do forth, you know, self-determined and self-autonomy, self-government, you know, and et cetera. And another thing, when you have human rights, you automatically have civil rights. That's right. Uh, in this book, dealing with the assassination of Fred Hampton, uh, it reads, it says, a, talk about Fred, Brother Fred Hampton, a messianic figure, Fred Hampton, who could unite and electrify the masses of black people and white people whenever he went and did, did indeed speak to the youth. Now, Fred Hampton like Malcolm, like Khalid Muhammad, they weren't afraid of the youth. Matter of fact, Fred Hampton was 21, to my knowledge, and they could talk to the gangs because the gangs knew that they were telling the truth and the gangs knew that they weren't playing. But uh, it says wherever he went, the knowledge arise, especially in Chicago, in the atmosphere which existed at that time with the murders of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King already accomplished and much of the path of leadership in jail or exile, Fred Hampton became to the agents of the government responsible for suppression of the movement the number one number one person on the hit parade. They actually had a list of the people that they were going to 
by Saturday late, and Fred Hampton in Chicago was on the top of that list. Yeah, well, that make that make um sense because according to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, um, we know that Jago Hoover called the party the greatest threat to the internal security of the country. Right. And he supervised an extensive program, which is basically calling out pro of surveillance, infiltration, perjury, police harassment, assassination, and many other tactics designed to undermine the party's leadership, you know, and incriminate party members and drain the organization of resources and manpower. And through these tactics, you know, um, Hoover hopes to um, diminish the um, party threat to the general power structure of the United States and even maintain its influence on a strong mm-hmm. undercurrent. You know, um, that's why Angela Davis and uh, Ward Churchill and others had alleged that the federal, state, and local law enforcement officials went to great lengths to discredit and destroy the organization, including assassination. Right. Another thing, just like they drugged uh, Fred Trump and Mark Clark, they've been using all types of drugs, especially when you go to prison and these hospitals and stuff like that. And when we talk about assassinations, we're not just talking about assassinations of individuals. We're talking about assassination of a people. Now, uh, I have a book here called uh, The Population Explosion. And all this goes together with assassinations because, like I just said, they don't just assassinate you as an individual. They assassinate you as a people. Now, this is the little introduction to this book. This book is about people like you and me. Now, this is a white person talking, so you can't be talking about you and me. This book is about people like you and me. The trouble is that there are a lot of us, and our number numbers are increasing rapidly. If we are not careful, we may end up destroying the planet. We live on sometimes the next few centuries. At the present rate of growth, the population of the world would double in 40 years. In the time you have taken to read this far, the numbers of the human living, the numbers of humans living on the earth has increased by 50. If this trend were to continue at the same rate, by the end of the 26th century, each person would only have 4.9 square feet of land, standing room only. In the development of countries, we have come to regard cars and televisions as necessities. And naturally, people all over the world would also like to own these things. But in the manufacturing of them, we are using up the Earth's limited limited supply of valuable materials and resources. Industries, everyday life, all generate the same kind of pollution, which is beginning to harm environments. If the number of people requiring better quality of life continues to increase, the Earth's materials will be used up more quickly. Pollution will become worse, and there will not be enough food for all of us. Now, the us, you know who the us they're talking about. Until recently, the number of human beings on the Earth has not been sufficient enough to have any real effect on the world around us. The small amounts of pollution were easily absorbed by the natural surroundings, the trees, the grass. But they're cutting all this down now. Uh, And though there may have been local overcrowding, there was more than enough room for all. Now this situation has changed. There's more niggas in the world. That's me talking. The earth can still support more people, but there must be a limit There must be a limit, and we are reaching it too quickly. We are already aware of the problem, and in many parts of the world, educational, medical, viruses, and this is 
of me where it says medical viruses, diseases, and it says birth control program are helping to reduce the number of babies born. But is this population explosion already out of control? The devil has a way of talking if you're not really understanding what he's saying. He's talking about you, but you don't really know it. The biggest thing going down right now in this country is the flu virus. You're taking shots. You don't even know what's in the shot. So you got to be very careful of that. In the uh, days of Wall Street Journal, deadly bacteria infection on the rise. A deadly type of infection that has become difficult and sometimes impossible to treat is on the rise in American hospitals and threatens to spread to other healthy people outside the medical faculties, federal health officials said Tuesday. The culprit is a family of germs known as, I can't even pronounce this, E. N T E R O B A C T E R I A C E A E that are a normal part of the digestive system but can cause infection when they get into the bladder, the blood, and other areas of the body that they don't belong. And as we go on, this will lead to the assassination of Hugo Chavez. Exactly. Um, no doubt about it, brother, the big man, and he developed cancer all of a sudden, and um, how basically that just took him out um, within the last two days. Um, you want to go to the phone lines in order to see what's going on here? You got brother um, James Russell to get ready to put you on. Peace, can you hear us? Uh, I don't hear anybody. All right. I'm waiting for you to, for you to come on in here. All right. As you're waiting, can I mention some of these books I have? Yeah, please, brother. Okay, one of the books is called Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of the Medical Experimentations on the Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present by Harry A. Washington. That's what everybody should get, because that's dealing with the biological warfare from slavery time to colonial time, dealing with the Native Americans, and it updates to what's happening right now. Uh, of course, the uh, Malcolm X speeches, the last speeches, I have that. The Fred Hampton, the assassination of Fred Hampton. That's by uh, Jeffrey. Brother Lane. Yes, I'm here. Uh, the assassination of Fred Hampton. Who's that by again? Oh, um, Haas. H-A-A-S, Haas. Okay, right. I have uh, Counting the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. That's been yeah, out for the last 25 years. Right. Uh, Jawanda Jawanda Kujufu. Kujufu. right. I have uh, Riot and Remembrance. That's dealing with uh, the, the Rosewood uh, uh, Massacre. Where they, and I'm going to read something out of that where those were the first people in America that were bombed by their own uh, military. They dropped bombs on those people. They used to call it Black Wall Street, you know? Then I have a very rare one that some people might not have by way of deception. The making and unmasking of a Mossad agent. And that plays uh, heavily into the assassination of Khalid Muhammad. And, uh, yeah, that's about all right now. All right, sound good Did to me. Come on? 
No, he didn't come on yet. Um, we have technical difficulties, but we're gonna try to um refresh it and see what we can do here. But um, before we get to um you or Chavez, I want to get back to some of this information on the um Black Panther, so we can make sure that everyone understand what was going on about a year after they formed on October the seventeenth, nineteen sixty seven. The Oakland um, police officer, John Fry, was shot to death in an altercation with Huey P. Newton during a traffic stop. And in the stop, Newton and backup officer Herbert Hines also suffered gunshot wounds. And Newton was arrested and charged with murder, which sparked a free Huey campaign organized by Eldridge Cleaver, um, you know, for um, Newton's legal defense. And, um, of course, Newton was convicted of voluntary manslaughter. So after three years in prison, he was released when his conviction was reversed on appeal. You know, um, also in 1968, um, April, the party was involved in, a, in another gun battle in which that um, Panther Bobby Hutton was um, killed. And Cleaver, who was wounded later, said that he led the Panther group on a deliberate ambush of the police officers, you know, through prov- um, um, thus provoking the um, shootout. Right. And so, you know, Eldridge Cleaver, you know, was seen as an agent based on him stating that, uh-huh. you know, and getting um, Bobby Hutton, um, little Bobby Hutton killed. You know, um, in Chicago on, um, on December the 4th, 1969, two part, um, part of, um, Panther Party members was killed when the Chicago police raided a home of of course, um, Fred Hampton, as you were saying, and Mark Clark. Um, of course, we know what happened with them because um, they were some of the most popular ones. But then we also have later on um, in 2000 when predominant um, Black Panther Party uh, member who was um, H. Rap Brown, who was known as um, Emil Jamal, uh, Jamal Alamine, who is now serving life imprisonment, supposedly murdering um, Rick, Ricky Leon um, Ketchin who was a Fulton County Georgia Sheriff Deputy and wounded another officer in a gun battle. Both officers were so-called black. You know, uh-huh. so, you know, we want to get all this information in. And also, um, we know that there's been several other connections, like one of the um, Bay Area's most predominant radical activists of the era was Richard Masanto Oko, or Oki. And um, who was a fierce, um, I guess you would say, um, militant. And he was actually one of the first to actually help with the Panthers getting the gun. But come to find out, you know, and also with the weapon training, but come to find out that he was a FBI agent or informant. Was, was that the guy that was a, a Japanese, something like that? Yeah, that was the Japanese Oko, o- Oki. Right, yeah. okay. Hey, Oki, yeah. Yeah, Richard Oki. Yeah, who ended up um, committing suicide, you know, after um, you know, that information became um, mainstream after it went viral. Uh-huh. And FBI intelligence informant, you know, overtly filing report, you know, on the Bay Area, um, Panthers for years, going to the meetings, sitting down and getting all the information, telling what was said. Another thing, and it goes back to when you go to jail, Huey Newton was in jail, and uh, Eldridge Cleaver in jail, uh, Brother H. Trap Brown in jail, Marcus Garvey in jail, Elijah Muhammad in jail. And if you don't really have a strong system or whatnot, you're, you're a captive person in jail. They give you what they want to give you. And when Huey Newton came out of jail and at the end of his life, the drugs had affected the way he was thinking. He was very short-tempered. He was accusing a lot of people of different things, being agents and et cetera. But this is what they give you to make you power. I mean, really, they they are after us, but they can give you something to make you think that a rat is after you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, Huey Newton 
one of the, the great founders of the uh, Black Panther Party, man. Like, uh, they said he really, he really went out there, and uh, they said he was sticking up drug dealers and taking the money and taking the drugs. If, uh, and then this guy, uh, several years later, I don't know if it was that guy, but several years later, someone killed him, you know what I'm saying? So right. he died a, a tragic death. But I just find it ironic is that uh, the Black Party spoke about tearing down the system, and I see that Bobby Rush has become a congressman building up the system, and Bobby Rush was one of the people that voted to, if I'm correct, when they had to vote on Asada Shakur, as far as going to get her, they, they have a bounty on her head, I think over a million dollars. I think uh, you can correct me on this, because if I'm wrong, but some kind of way he didn't vote on it or he voted on it, one, one of the two. Right. Right, I think that he abstained, if I'm not mistaken, right. Okay. Now, <laughs> why would you abstain? Why would you just say, I think it's wrong? Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I find I find it ironic, just like Jesse Jackson, right? Who ran for president to become a part of the system, right? And there's one book that I didn't mention called Shakedown: The Hidden History of Jesse Jackson. Mm. Now we know that his son. It's convicted on a felony of, I think, stealing $700,000, buying watches and buying flat screens TV. He's going to do time as his son's wife. So the sins of the father sometimes falls on the son. Mm. When you get hooked up in this system, brother, the system is corrupt. Well, that's amazing. When we, get to, when, we, when we get to Chavez, when they start talking about it's no conspiracy, uh, I got some information on that. Well, come on with it. But before you get to it, let me say this about Jesse Jackson Jr. is the fact that he actually approached Steve Coakley and said that his father would have to pay basically the consequences of his actions concerning the death of Martin Luther King, the assassination of Martin Luther King. Okay. Right. So for him to be going to jail, you're right. That is um some irony. Yeah. But we also got to add in too that there's actually been reports of Al Sharpton also being an FBI informant and attempting to bring Asada Shakur from out of Cuba back here to the United States. That's true. Uh, if you have that computer, you can go on the internet and tap in how to stop the FBI informant, and it come right up there. Yep. But he's been able to change his image, lose about a hundred pounds, cut his process down, go to a speech class where he can talk a little bit better, where he took off the uh, jogging suits. Now he's wearing $500 suits. Uh, he's invited to the White House, so he has uh, clearance to go to the You know, a lot of people you got to have clearance to go to the White House. That's so right. he has top government clearance, you know? Yeah. So, as they say, what about that? Exactly. You're right about that. So you can go on, brother. Oh, okay. Well, um, I also want to bring up the fact of the U.S., which is the United Slaves, um, you know, members on ULC campus, and how um, these organizations with the Black Panther Party, and how they, on I think it was January the 17th, 1968, no, 1969, how the two members of the Black Panther Party, um, Apprentice Bunchy Carter and John Huggins, was killed by the U.S. or the United Slaves, uh, members up under... 
Um, another FBI, right, another FBI informant allegedly, um, Bulana Karanga. Right. Mm. A lot of people, uh, I was at a lecture one time and a uh, question and answer period came up and a brother asked him that question and people had a hole in back. So when you speak about that, it gets very touchy. And Brother Steve Coakley was uh, on the radio and uh I think Karanga called in or whatever, and they were talking uh, very peacefully and everything. <laughs> and something happened when Steve had mentioned something. Uh, Karanga began to talk about Steve's mama. You know what I'm saying? So that's a subject that he doesn't want to deal with. But at that time, they used to. I think call his group the cultural cultural nationalists or something like that. Right. And, but I, I tell you the truth, all that was a part of Cartel Pro too. It was. All that was a part of uh, getting uh, one group to kill off the other group, and then the exactly. government would stand back and let that happen. So. Right now, uh, allegedly, allegedly, it was Elaine Brown, allegedly, in which that 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 um confliction. But that um, confrontation was caused over. Okay. And you know this from the report that she was also an FBI informant. Mm. Oh, yeah, Lane Brown. Uh, right. In yeah. her book, she has a book out, and some kind of way she said that she was involved with that. Right. Or her mentor, one of her mentors, you know what I'm saying? So that's why these books are so important, and... Uh, I know a lot of people love the internet, you know, where they get information. But these books, you got to read these books to get you a library, you know, because uh, uh, one day they're going to start, well, they already started getting rid of the books. i tell you the truth, brother. That's right. Well, I know before the internet, before 2000, before, you know, the computer was in everyone's home, you know, I had to read hundreds and thousands of books, articles, newspapers, pamphlets booklet in order to get this information. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, now is at the fingertips of most um people coming up, you know, you know, now just to be able to go online, but you don't know if that's misinformation or disinformation coming from the CIA or COINTELPRO um FBI conjunction, you know, you don't know. You hit it right on the head. Uh or some of these uh uh YouTube programs you have government agents who are telling you to do this and telling you to do that, you don't have no history of the person that you're looking at or the person that's lecturing to you. The person just popped out of the sky like Shazam, you know? Right. We'll give a good example of that is Alex Jones. Everybody loves Alex Jones. They want to listen to the conspiracy man. You know, they want to, you know, listen to Alex Jones. They want to read David Icke's books. They want to watch... You know, um, Jesse Ventura, you know, conspiracy theorists. You know, they right. want to do all these things with these individuals. But when it comes to, you know, if they melanated, you know, they're, you know, more, you know, whatever the case may be, so-called black, they need to be getting it from a so-called perspective, you know, from their own people. You know, because, like you say, um, here we are reading and studying this information for years and years and years. You know, and, you know, we read the books, we've done our research, and so we can present it to you, you know, in a way in which that is more informative as far as how it relates to you on an everyday basis as compared to um, the so-called Europeans and the way in which they want to take everything away from you and then put it on an alien. And another thing, Brother Lane, we have lived it. Right. We've been on the streets. You know what I'm saying? We have lived it. The people know who we are. That's you true. know what I'm saying? But just popping out of the sky like Shazam. Uh, we don't have a record of who that right. person is. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's why you always have to uh, think before you make a move. Right. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. In the book, uh, Counting the Conspiracy Destroyed Black Boys, 
When we talk about assassination, there's many types of assassination. One of the worst assassinations is the assassination of your mind and uh, and your spirit. Uh, just, just the ones that come speaks about when a boy is at a certain age, he's very bright, he's very smart, he's ready, to, he's ready to grow, he's ready to do it. But once he gets into that educational system, uh, it changes. As a matter of fact, it discourages you from uh, the greatness. Uh, Malcolm X told his teacher he wanted to be a lawyer. Dr. Clark told his teacher he wanted to do something big, and the teacher discouraged them. So there's many types of assassinations, assassinating your spirit. Oh, yeah. That that is one of the main things is the mental control or the mind control fact you know factor in all of this and the way in which they've been able to manipulate you know us you know like you said the way they was able to put um the U S slaves slash you know Black Panthers you know um confrontation together and use these particular informants in order to you know produce these wars or battles between a cultural and a socialistic you know party in which they base Essentially on the same format, and that was to uplift fallen humanity or to help their people. Right. You know, like, like, for example, we got um, another article in which that states on May the 23rd, 1969, John Savage, who was a member of the um, Black Panthers of the Southern California, was shot and killed by a U.S. or, you know, a so-called United, you know, United Slave um, member, you know, um, Jerry Holmes, you know, a.k.a. Tumbusi. You know, and the killer was uh, reported in the FBI memorandum, which states that the competition between the groups were now ranging from mere harassment up to and including beating of various individuals. You know what I'm saying? So this was a um, this was a thing during that time period between these two groups. You're right about that, brother. Yeah. So it just goes to show how we was used and manipulated in order to, you know continue going at each other and killing each other while they stand back and say, okay, well, good. I'm glad that you're doing our work for us. Uh, there's a saying, if it works, why well, can't it? That's right. In the conscious community, well, I would really call it the so-called conscious community because uh Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark were great friends, brothers. But Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben did not agree on everything. And they would get into their little debates and, and uh, disagreement, but they wouldn't cuss each other out. They wouldn't call each other MF and nigga and all the kind of stuff. But right now, what you got is certain people. That causes the thing. What do they call that thing when you talk about somebody's mom? This is or something like that? Right. It was a, you know, a disaster. You know what I'm saying? So, right now, we got, we got brothers doing this with each other, you know? And if we, if we say that we are. Trying to help the people. They're confused enough. Some need more confusion. Keep going, brother. All right. Um, we were trying to hear you there, brother Big Man. We couldn't hear you, so try to say that one more time. What I just said? Yes, please, because now you sound clearer. For some reason, you didn't yeah, sound clear. That's why I was saying at the beginning, it's, it's a little static in the line. I don't know what that's about. Right, well, I know what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got you 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 on the money, brother. Right. Uh, what I was saying is that Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben were great friends and brothers, but they did not agree on everything. Right. And they had little debate among themselves, but they didn't call each other MF. They didn't call each other nigger. 
they had a civilized conversation. Right. But in the so-called conscious community now, you have people who actually curse each other out in front of an audience and think that that's knowledge. I mean, dramatically. <laughs> and by me being 66, right. I ain't never seen nothing like it. I've been to College Muhammad's debate, Malcolm debate, seen Malcolm in the flesh. I mean, you name all the speakers, and I ain't never seen nothing out of it. And mm. if you say, if you give a lecture, if you give a lecture, and 10,000 of your words is MF, and one, and maybe 200 words is of knowledge, the people ain't learn nothing. You write about that, brother, big man. As as a matter and, of fact, you right. Go ahead. And it seems like the brothers have knowledge, but it's just like in the hip hop gangster rap. The more so called tougher you sound, the more ugly faces you can make. The more you can walk like you're a gangster, then you're trying to impress the crowd. That's that's the way it seems to me. I agree. I, I can't help but to agree with that, brother big man. And here it is, you know, you in the community after 50 years of watching all of these great lecturers, you have to come to the conclusion that within the last few years here, building up to the 2012, is that when you start seeing all this damn craziness. The condition that our people are in, we need help. Right. I can stand on a corner and and listen to the so-called dead people curse each other out. I don't have to go to a lecture and spend 25 or $30 to sit up front and listen to somebody cursing each other out. That don't even make sense to me. Right. When we started Grassroots Productions, me, myself, me, Leon Muhammad, and uh, Brother Yusuf, we were charging like $10.00. The lecture might have been four or five hours. It was a dollar time, if it was you or whoever. There was no, none of that crazy. As a matter of fact, give, give me a couple of minutes just to talk about grassroots productions. Because, Please do. Grassroots uh, productions were started by three or four people, you know? Right. And. We had invited Steve Coakley to speak at Fort Green, and he couldn't help me. So a brother called Tim told me maybe we should get Brother Valentine. And we got Brother Valentine's phone number and called him, and we asked him we'd do a lecture, I think, on health, because our people are messed up physically. And he said, sure. So Phil Valentine kind of came out of retirement because the metaphysic lectures had gone down. I'm talking about like 1988, 1989, and then moving into the 90s. Uh, the, the lectures had gone down. So when Phil agreed to speak for grassroots production, that lecture was so great that we asked him, would he do another one? And then uh, when The Matrix came out, The Matrix movie, me and Phil was in the same movie house on 84th Street and Broadway. We just happened to meet by accident. And after the movie, I said, Phil, I think this will make a great lecture. And Phil said, brother, when you get home, give me a call. And we was on the phone all night long talking about the matrix. And we said, we're going to do it. And Phil told me out of his own mouth that the matrix series, starting with matrix one, was the greatest lecture or response that he ever got from the public. Mm -hmm. And from there... 
Phil started busting them out again. He sure did. Metaphysics of the Bible. Right. All that. History of Christianity. Yep. I mean, Phil started busting it out. And then we started selling in front of the Dempsey Theater. Leon had a table, Yusuf had a table, I had a table. And the ironic thing is that all the young brothers that was just getting into it would come to us and buy the tape that we had just filmed. And we didn't care because, number one, we were making money. For, and I'm telling the truth, Brother Shabazz, Brother Black Dot, Brother Sayonetta, all the young, Brother Rich, all the young brothers that you see today was buying grassroots productions tapes. We didn't even care what they did with them. We know they weren't just buying them to buy them, but we didn't care because we wanted the information to get to the public. Right. Now, you got some people that will beat you up if you sell some of their tapes. That's but right. one thing I got to say about Sarnetta. I remember how Sarnetta started out. You know how you buy a box of videotapes? Right. And they had a box, 10 in a box? Mm-hmm. Sayonetta started out with a box of tapes in front of Dempsey. And as the people would come out, he would sell the tapes for $10 or whatever. And then he moved to in front of uh, the juice bar on 125th Street. And from there, they chased him. And then he moved to in front of the uh, Mark 125. And then they arrested him in front of Mark 125 and put him on uh, St. Nicholas Avenue. And he was catching hell over there. Then said that had enough balls to come back. And he got arrested again. So what I'm saying, out of all them brothers, Sayonetta, to my knowledge, was one of the brothers that really paid his dues. Because he was on the street, in the cold, in the street, just like me. And I, I was out there before anybody came out there. That's right. When I was in front of where, where my stand is at, where Marshall's is at right now, that was a damn garbage dump. People used to throw garbage and there was trees in there. And when the police removed me from 135th Street, they said, we don't want you selling here. Go to 125th Street. And when I got to 125th Street, I looked around. And on that spot that I'm talking about, the tree of life used to be on that spot. And I said, what better spot than the tree of life? And from after years of being out there, brothers and sisters, I had one of the largest book stands out there. My spot was like a tourist uh, spot. People used to come by, buy all the books. I wasn't even selling videos at that time, but they bought the tapes and the books and everything like that. And then other brothers began to come out. Brother Wally, you know. Uh, Sekou didn't come out until maybe five years later because Sekou was on 145th Street in front of First World. That's where he used to be at all the time. And then when they moved First World, then he kind of moved down on 25th Street, more so up there by the state office building. So, and then when Giuliani removed all the vendors, I was the first vendor to come back to challenge that thing about no book selling on 25th Street. And I'm not just talking because I got the tapes to back it up. I got videotapes. When I came out the first day, the police with the paddy wagons drove up. I had a brother filming it. I said, I ain't going to be no Rodney King. I had a brother filming it. And when the police came up, and I ran down that law about the book law, the First Amendment, freedom of the, the press, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. That cracker got on the telephone and called his superior officer and said, he said that he's allowed to sell books under the First Amendment. Is that right? And that cracker said, what? He can? Okay. Don't you know that 
police officer shook my hand behind that. Mm. And that's just some of that's just some of the history. That's just some of the history. So well, I, the reason why I said that is because there are brothers and sisters out here that we don't even know about. They're dead. The sacrifices they 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 they're not in the history books. They don't get an award. So when you when you tell the truth, tell the whole truth. Right, I remember um I had um Brother Hakeem Bay on here like about three weeks ago and um he was talking about when he was down there on hundred and twenty fifth street too selling um books and, and um pamphlets and different other things too. Who was that? Brother Hakeem Bay. Oh yeah. Matter of fact, yeah, Hakeem Bay Hakeem Bay used to sell in front of the Mark one twenty five. Hakeem Bay used to draw crowds. Oh yeah. Hakeem Bay is another one. He's a he's a pioneer. That people might not know that. You know what I'm saying? That's right. He gets credit, but he don't get the credit that he should get. Right. You can go on, brother. Oh no, we're gonna go on and get into um the um information on Hugo Chavez, but before we do, I want to talk about on um, December the 18th, 1968, how Jeff Ford and other Blackstone Rangers was involved with serious confrontation with members of the Black Panther Party, too. And that according to that, during the day, there was, um, during that day, there was 12 members of the Black Panther Party and five known members of the Black um, Stone Rangers was arrested on Chicago South Side, and that, um, um, 49, in which that a report indicated that the uh, Panthers and the Rangers were arrested following the shootout of one of the um, Panthers' uh, buyer rangers. You know, so, you know, um, as a matter of fact, it says, upon their arrival, Jeff Ford invited Frank, um, Fred Hampton, Bobby Rush, and other Black Panther members to come upstairs and meet with him and the Rangers' leadership. And the Bureau goes on to describe what transpired at that evening because they had spies as well as also, um, you know, um, listening devices there, you know. So, you know, this, this is also something in which that we have to um, talk about too, how, once again, how they were uh, pitting two so-called black organizations against each other too. Yes, sir. And, pe- and I want to say that because people don't know that there was also, um, you know, that the Blackstone Rangers and the Black Panther Party also had um, a situ- had situations too. Uh, there's a movie, to my knowledge, called The Warriors. And the best part of the movie is the first ten minutes, where all these gangs are coming to. I think it was the Bronx. All these gangs are coming to the Bronx for this big meeting. And it's this gang leader called Cyrus. And everybody, all these other gangs respect him. That's why they're coming to this meeting. And the the meeting was to control New York for the gangs to stop fighting among themselves and control New York. And he was assassinated on the spot by this unknown uh, assailant. So, that is the profile of anybody that's trying to get the people together, especially young people. So when uh, the Panthers are out there and the Blackstone Rangers and the El Rookins and all, brother. Just imagine if someone could have organized their brothers and sisters to fight the real enemy. So that's why they had to bring in the drugs and the guns and the sex and all the crazy, the money and the division and the jealousy. They were working on that, working on that overnight, sending letters to this one and sending letters to that one. Divide and conquer, brother. Give it what? No doubt about it. Why change? Exactly, exactly. No doubt about it. 
we're going to get into um, some more information here concerning the current, current day events. Um, what's your thoughts on the Pope? Before we get into the Hugo Chavez, what's your thoughts on the Pope resigning? And, and uh, that, that, that information there, brother, big man. What's your, what's your thoughts on the Pope resigning uh, and, um, and the correlation to current events in the world of faith? Well, I don't really have too much to say about that because I haven't even had time to do research. But I would say this is that uh, that hasn't happened in, what, 600 years or something like that? Something like that. Right. And if he's, if he's stepping down, he ain't stepping down because of old age or nothing like that. He's stepping down because somebody might – Getting, uh, getting ready to expose something on on uh, the Pope. You know what I'm saying? Exactly but right. uh, you might have done more research on that. Uh, right. Really, uh, I haven't done too much research on uh, on that particular Pope. Right. Well, well you absolutely correct, Brother Big Man. Two days ago, they were indicted by the International Common Law World Court, basically, or International <laughs> Common Law Court. Um, and indicted for 25 years for violations against humanity. Him and Queen um, Elizabeth and the Prime Minister of Canada. Yeah. Right now, I'm moving around in my house because uh, the sound quality is kind of, you know, my, my phone battery is charged up and everything, so I can't say my battery is down, but a lot of what you're saying, I can't make out, but as long as it comes out clear on your end, maybe everything is still all right. All right. Well, you sound clearer too, Brother Big Man. What I was saying was is that the Pope, two, day, two days ago, along with Queen Elizabeth and the Prime Minister of Canada, were indicted and placed and supposedly put in prison for 25 years for violations against humanity. Mm. Yeah, I think it had to do with sex. <laughs> hey, this this is um also of the deaths of over fifteen thousand Native Americans and Indians in Canada. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot going on here. At least that's what was stated. So we don't know exactly what's going on as far as where they are at. But the Pope resigned and said that um he would be um in seclusion for the rest of his life, basically. So. Um, you know, you know that's what's going on. They get ready to put this so-called black pope in place, and according to the prophecies of Malachi, it is stated that this is going to be the last pope before the fall of the so-called Catholicism or the um, so-called Catholic. Right. And right. This new pope, yeah, and this new pope that's coming in is called Peter Turkson. You know, out of Ghana. So we're going to see what's going to happen. He's supposed to be being there by Passover, by Easter. What's that again? He's supposed to be in there by Passover, by Easter. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Passover. Mm. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to pass over. Right. The people have a, the people have a short memory, brother. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess we're going to get into the Hugo Chavez um, assassination or him, you know, allegedly dying of cancer. So, you know, let's get into that there, Brother Big Man. What's your thoughts on that information? Well, uh, when I go to the library, you know, all the papers are there, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal and all that. And I have the story, and... uh, one thing, the number one thing I saw was this, and I'm going to read what they said. Mr. Chavez was voted into power in 1998 on a tide of citizen disgust with the corruption of the democratically elected politicians who had ruled Venezuela for three decades. He went on to dominate the country, which boasts the world's 
largest oil reserve. I'm going to repeat that. He went on to dominate the country which boasts or which has the world's largest oil reserves. For the past 14 years, spending billions to create what he called a 21st century socialism. They also speak how he built homes for the poor, distributed food, cut a lot of the foreign debt because he was in, they were in control of their natural resources. So in my opinion, that oil alone, by being the world's largest oil reserve, having that, he was number one on the list of being assassinated. And the way they assassinate people now, not that they didn't do it in the future, but the people have been dumbed down so much that if you die from a heart attack, John Brown died from a heart attack. If you, if they say you died from an aneurysm, mm-hmm. such and such died from an aneurysm. We believe what they tell us. So they say Mr. Chavez died from cancer. He went to Cuba because Cuba has the best doctors in the world dealing with not only cancer but with all type of diseases and everything like that. And he went there. And it looked like they had cured it, but what Mr. Chavez had, to my knowledge, was man-made, just like the AIDS virus. And Dick Gregory has spoken about him being exposed to radiation right. and by him having certain herbs and Stuff like that. He said he was cured. Right. They Paul can drop Ray. this stuff. Yeah. They can drop this stuff in your drink, your food, brother. And uh, I'm gonna read something. Uh, this was a brother that was, and I'm reading out of the book, uh, Medical Apartheid. Uh, no, wit- no witness lingered to describe the accident, but on March 24, 1945, truck driver E. Cod of Greenboro, <coughs> North Carolina, was one of four passengers who suffered severe injuries <coughs> and was taken to the Manhattan Engineer District Hospital in Oak Ridge. Now, read that name. The Manhattan Engineer District Hospital in Oak Ridge. <clears throat> Doctor said he would not live. But medical fortune smiled on him. He rallied quick, quickly within days and was recovered nicely. Then Cade's luck ran out. Unknown to him, the hospital physicians assigned to his care were under the contract to the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. They were also under the supervision of Stone. (laughs) The AEC Assistant Health Director, who had been searching for a morbid patient to inject with plutonium. They were searching for a morbid patient to inject with plutonium. On April 10th, without his consent, and five days before setting his broken bones, the military physician, Joseph Howard, injected K with 4.7 milligrams of plutonium. 
41 times the normal lifetime exposure. The man-made element of petroleum is a senior toxin, radioactive substance, one that caves body would not harbor forever. The half-life or time it takes a dose of petroleum to, to disappear is 24,056 years. You hear that, brother? Yeah. For that, a, for that petroleum to disappear out of the body, it takes over 24,000 years. They gave him a whopping dose of petroleum. I'm not going to read more, but when you when you have people who say they wouldn't do that, they wouldn't do that. In this book, there's hundreds and hundreds of cases dealing back from slavery, dealing with the Native Americans as far as the smallpox, the syphilis, all these vaccines and people and so there's no doubt in my mind that uh they took uh Hugo to them and my question is this who's the next one gonna be? I think that is twelve years ago the assassination of Black Leaders and college Carlos Mahama was alive then. Dale Jones was alive then. Yes, yeah, Steve Copeland was alive then. Right, Steve Copeland was alive then. Steve right. Copeland was given given the lectures right. himself. Right, Ishibusha Bear Shango was alive then. My brother, you hitting it on the head. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, have we changed our... Now, it's no 100% system to stop the devil from killing you. But doing a lot of this dumb stuff, you can change that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Eating anywhere. Drinking anywhere. Right. Let it, letting anybody fix your food. Now... We got time because uh, I, yeah. I have. Uh, yeah, we got another Steve half an hour. We got another half an I hour. Have Steve Co- yeah, I have Steve Coakley's uh, funeral right. on paper, obituary. And there's a lot of things in his obituary that I didn't know and a lot of people don't know. So I'm going to read this. All right, hold on, Brother Big Man. Let me bring in. I'm Brother L. Okay. And we're going to get right into it. Brother L, you here? Uh, yes, sir. Brother, peace and love, there, Brother Dr. Aline. Peace and love, Brother Grand Sheik. How you doing tonight? Doing well, doing well. I've been listening to y'all since 7 o'clock. And, uh, man, you're living, de- 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 definitely uh, put down some heavy science here. About this All right, appreciate that. Appreciate that. How's the brother? Was the sound clear? Uh, I can hear you clear, Paul. Uh, uh, bro- bro. Okay, all right. Uh, this is the obituary. Hotel. Steve Coakley entered into this life on June 17, 1952. Born to Lawrence and Lillian Coakley, both parents deceased. Steve attended the D. LaSalle High School, where he was an avid baseball player. Steve also attended Northern Illinois University, where in college, and his role as a NAACP youth leader. His political activism began. Steve met N-A-T-A-K-I, that's a sister, in 1981 at a Chicago Board of Education hearing where they 
testified against the controversial hiring of non-residents. Thomas Ayers as its CEO, they were married December 17th, uh, 1982, and two children were born, Stephen II and N-A-K-I-A, a daughter. Steve's career began with the Department of Justice and included Bobby Wright Community Mental Health Center, Chief of Staff to Alderman Marion H. and Eugene Sawyer. He later became a mayoral aide to Mayor E. Sawyer, who succeeded Howard Washington. And Steve gave a great lecture on the death of Howard Washington. That's right. Mm -hmm. Steve began a full-time career as a political researcher and lecturer, traveling the country, delivering lectures, and speaking at universities and community organizations. His main commitment was that of researching and revealing the secret societies that control world economics and politics. Steve frequently toured with noted activist and lecturer Khalid Abdel Muhammad and Dick Gregory. Steve is survived by his wife, N-A-T-A-K-I, Conley Coakley, a son, Steve Coakley II, daughters, N. Coakley, and Maat Coakley. Maat Coakley was born when she was do, doing the lectures, and he used to bring her to the lectures, I knew her personally, and a stepson, Rashid Gordon. Steve is also survived by his brother. This is something we didn't know. I didn't know that he had a brother. Mm, his brother, Joe it. Turner, brother-in-law, Clifford Jackson, mother-in-law, Janetta Gilmore, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephew, cousins, and very special community friends across the country. A memorial fund, a memorial fund was established at the family bank at Bank of America, account number 217470945. I don't know if that's still open, but uh, it also says that uh, this was held in Chicago Saturday, May 5th, 300 people attended. It doesn't say whether any people that we know attended because everything was so mysterious, I didn't even know where the funeral was going to be at, who was organizing it, because a lot of the people that Steve spoke for, I don't know whether they put out that information on the Internet or whatever, but I, I didn't hear anything about it until it was damn near over. What about you, brother? Same here, brother. Same here. Um, I didn't hear anything about it in the conscious community. Um, matter of fact, we didn't hear anything until the day in which that brother Steve passed. Of course, that was 4 11, 2012. You know, and as he already, you know, broke down as far as, you know, um, conspiracy wise, that 4 11, of course, symbolizes, you know, when you press 411 on the phone, that symbolizes information. He was the information man. So, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, people think that that was just coincidental. You know, so, you know, definitely. Um, we see that there was some, you know, some secrecy behind that, you know, and, um, you know, what was the secrecy, you know, and why was it warranted, you know, because um, there would have, there sure enough would have been more than just 300 people at that funeral. It would have been three on which that brother Steve would have touched who would have mm -hmm. wanted to come to that funeral. Uh, brother Arlene, has anybody, uh, were, were, have you been able to share that tape that uh, 
I did, and the tape that the last tape that Steve did on the Nikki Love Show, was you able to share that with anybody to to let them understand the severity of what really happened to Brother Steve Coakley? Well, I got in contact with Brother Phil, and um, I'm going to send it to him. So, um, okay. yeah, because I know that's the last thing that we talked about was getting him involved in it. Um, also, so we can definitely, um, you know, do that, you know, through the hard way and um, get that information out to the public once everybody do their research on everything. Now, I'm glad that you right, got the right. And, and another thing about uh, Hugo Chavez, with all these black leaders and teachers, brother, he was 58, Malcolm, 39, Khalid Muhammad. I don't remember. He was probably young. I don't know. He was up there. He was 53. Right, Dr. Khaled was 53. So, all these young men, he said, Khaled Muhammad, brother. Khaled used to live with him. Khaled, man, was in shape. And uh, what happens is that uh, Public Enemy put out a song one time called Don't Believe the Hype. That's right. When somebody tells you something, brother, and you know the person, don't believe the first. And when I say that, I'm talking to the public. Don't believe the first thing you hear. Right. Do your research. You know, if you, if you know a brother, uh, take care of himself and works out. Don't drink. Don't smoke. And you read in the newspaper that he was driving his car and he he had alcohol on his breath. Think about that. I never saw the brothers drink. You know what I'm saying? Right. So don't just take the don't just take the word of the devil without right. doing your own research. You know. So um, another good book is uh, Murder by Injection. Another good book is a biological a biological and chemical warfare mm. response. This book, mm. this book deals with if you are exposed, what you can do to the best of your ability. You know, a lot of these books are hard to get because I, I go to used bookstores. There was a big uh, two-day fair down here last week where I went and uh a lot of rare books, the books they sell for like a quarter, 50 cents, a hard cover of a dollar. Hey, the man. Still there? Still there? Yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's still here, but you can't hear him. You might have to move around in order to get back on the cell phone there before you can be heard. Okay. All right, he got dropped off. You're gonna have to call back in, brother. Um what you thought what you thinking about tonight? Um information here, brother L. Yes, sir, brother's very deep, very deep. I didn't know uh speak uh, Steve Coakley had a brother. Um right. mm-hmm. uh, uh, uh it was I didn't think he was so uh uh so detriment to the uh to the establishment. Would they have him uh, killed? Well, I, I mean, I mean, for him to be breaking down the Illuminati, the thirteen families dealing with the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Russells, the Merovingian, the Lees, the Duponts, the Reynolds, you know, the Astors, the Bundys, the Cotton, mm-hmm. you know, um, the Onassis, you know, the McDonalds, Canute, right. Van Dyne. You know, these so-called 13 Illuminati. Oh, he broke down all that? Yeah. Um, you know, and how they're the richest families in the world. As well as also the Council of Foreign Relations, which is the CFR, the Trilateral Commission, yeah. the Bilderbergers, um, and how basically all of them stem from, as well as also the Skull and Bones, um, the Boule, and how they all stem from, you know, is part of the first, second, wow. um, you know, and third and fourth chapters of the Illuminati. You know. so I, I, so I, never, I never heard too many of his uh, lectures. 
Yeah, you and definitely I, want to check them out once you get okay. your, once you get okay. back online. There, you definitely want to put in Steve Coakley's name and check out all his information online. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Man, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, uh, yeah. Uh, definitely uh, want to check my heat. Right now, um, the way that people feel about Alex Jones and him and his, you know, so-called conspiracy, conspiracy theories, um, these people don't even touch Brother Steve Coakley. Okay. That's well, Alex I'm, Jones and Jesse Ventura, and them, right. they just somebody they just put out there, right? To, to create a lot of hysteria. Right. Exactly. How I see it. Right. Well, that's the way. Also, William um, Cooper seen it too. Bill Cooper seen it um like that too. He um. Um, stated um, that Alex Jones was an agent in a sense, you know, and, um, you know, um, years ago, back, you know, um, before 2000, you know, during 2000, before 2000. So, you know, um, those things was already worn to us by William Cooper, who um, actually put out the book, you know, um, the phenomenal book, of course, you know, what we know it as, you know, Behold a Pale Horse. You know, okay. that was a under, that's an underground classic right there. Right. Urban right. classic. Yeah. Right, I, I didn't know Alex Jones was an agent, though. But I, well, I, I, I mean, the, the, this, this is this is what's been postulated. You know, um, um, William Cooper felt like you know, there was some Jesuits connections or ties, and this other people in which that have stated this too. Uh, we don't know for sure, of course, but you know, like you said, these are people in which that they parade before us, and right, the fact right. that um, they've been around as long as they have. You know, while, you know, other leaders, you know, or other people have been, you know, are not here, you know what I'm saying, will make you think that there might be something definitely going on. Right. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. Right. I know, uh, uh, like, David Ikes out here is a double agent. Right. That's right. what I heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but, you, but, you know, he, he has, he does have a lot of information. Right. There's a lot of information on which that we, of course, need to pay attention to, but when it comes to, you know, um, Brother Steve Coakley, I think that information needs to be at the forefront because it deals with us as a people, you know, and um, us at our level of where we are within society. You know, okay. we, can't, we can't get at the Rockefellers. We can't get at the Rothschilds, you know, but we can get at, you know, Jesse Jackson, um, Al Sharpton, and these other bootleg, you know, Negroes, you know, who are going around, you know what I'm saying, who are in our community, who come to us in order to get responses in order to, you know, um, get us caught up, you know, in their train of thought, you know, and become, you know, basically be mental, you know, mental or mind manipulated. I know uh, uh, dealing with this assassination of Chavez, uh, I always figured that he, that somebody had killed him off. Right. Hello? Yeah, we hear about Oh, he's back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, my line got cut mysteriously. We know why. Right. Right. I'm back, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got... You go ahead, Brother Big Man. We were just talking go about... Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you. Okay. No, I was saying that uh, this book, Biological and Chemical Warfare Response, right, tells you how to... If you're not exposed that much, it has uh, antidotes that you can use. And we were also talking about all our leaders and teachers dying right. at a young age. Right. That's Do me the a last favor. thing that I remember we were talking about. Right. Do me a favor, Brother Big Man. Can you look through the book and give some antidotes? Let's, I want to give some solutions, too, on some of this. Okay, let me see something for a minute. Okay. Hope they don't cut us off. No, well, we, he's doing it. <laughs> no, forget all that. We we we'll pop back on and and get it in. <laughs> right, right, right. They might say, oh, we, you no, can't let them tell them that. Cut them off again. <laughs> why, why, why I'm looking, y'all could be talking. Right, they I got, know, uh, for the grand they got I know, amp- I know, they got the anthrax. They got botulism. Right. They got the plague. They got smallpox, you know. Right. Uh, right. Nuclear radiation, nitrogen, mustard gas, mustard gas. Let me. While well, I'm looking through this book, because uh, it's a little technical too. Here's a section on anti 
Antibionic prescribing information. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Y'all could be talking. I, I'm I'm trying okay. to find something here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. brother L, you you was making mention of the fact, Grand Sheik, that um, of um, of um, the last part right before we brought brother Big Man back in. Yes, I was talking about um, uh, Chavez, the assassination of Chavez. Right, Hugo Chavez. Right. Hugo Chavez, and I know we kind of figured he uh, he was assassinated. Right. And he was right, also right. a close friend to Fidel Castro. Right. Who they, right. Who they never could uh, assassinate. Mm-hmm. But one or two ever since the ever since the Bay of Pigs. Right. Because he had so-called reneged on him. Right. Yeah, they've been trying to get him ever since what 1959. Right. Yeah. Trying to put pardon in his food and and some of everything, you know. Mm-hmm. But it did never that ever never did work. Right. Because I, I was heard that he had some kind of uh, ritual that he does. Right. That protects him from all that. Mm-hmm. Take some herbs and stuff like that. That protect them from uh, uh, certain diseases and poisons. Right. Like. Yeah. Well, we know that one of the herbs in which that neutralize poisons is black walnut. Black walnut. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Right. Cause somebody might try to poison me one day. You never know. Right. Well, that's that's what I want to get to is some some of these solutions because people don't have never heard this information um, before. And um, what they can do in order to, um, you know, keep themselves healthy and, you know, from these type of things. So, so we know that black yeah. walnut is used in order to neutralize poison. Um, we know that tuja leaf, which is called the tree of life, is also be used in order to counteract the vaccination mm-hmm. um, poisons within the body and to remove the vaccinations, which is also heavy metals and different other toxins. Uh, from the body and a particular from the liver and the bowels, or the um, so um, that is also good in order to get it, you know, to be you know ushered to the kidneys to be um, urinated out and also to the um, rectum in order to be defecated out. So okay, you know, we, up to the colon, um, de- um, rectum area that's for to be defecated out. So we know that these particular um, herbs, you know, in particular, tuja leaf is a homeopathic product in which that eliminates. Uh, vaccinations. Um, so if you have to take a vaccination, make sure you get some tuja leaf in which that removes the um, the toxic effects of the um, vaccines. You know, and there's yeah. other herbs in which that can be utilized. Yeah. Um, dandelion has all 12 nutritive blood salts, muscle salts, tissue salts, in which that can be utilized in order to um, neutralize the harmful effects of um, toxins also. And um, also, dandelion helps regulate the liver functions as well as also the kidneys, along with milk thistle. Now, um, are, they, are, are, they, are they good to take every day? or? Yeah, you can take these every day, brother. Okay. okay. In particular, brother dandelion, Lane. Yeah, dandelion and milk thistle, you definitely can. Brother Lane. Yes. Unfortunately, this book is recommending, <laughs> recommending more vaccines and stuff like that, so... What you're saying is more practical. Right. Now, I got a question for you. If you have, like, a sprain in your back or whatever, what's good for that? Comfrey. C-O-M-F-R-E-Y. Comfrey is excellent for um, for um, bone issues. Um, alfalfa is excellent for bone and muscle issues. So comfrey and alfalfa combination. Yeah, because uh, I ride my bike down here. The weather's nice. I ride my bike like five times a week, and sometimes I'm going up hills and all that. Sometimes my calves might get sore, and I might get a, a cramp or whatever. So wh- what you say is good for cramps too or what? Yeah, what's good for cramps is dandelion in order to remove the uric acid from out the body. Okay, all right, yeah. Right, because that's what that is. In order, um, what happens is that when we work out, uric and lactic, um, or lactic acid, um, get built up within the um, within the muscles and within the body. So, um, 
to neutralize those effects, dandelion can be taken in order to neutralize that. Good. And uh, drinking water, I know that's, yeah, plenty that's of water. on the list too. Right, plenty of water, about, um, if you can, about a gallon a day, especially during the um, hot month. Yeah. Now, I've met people down here, Brother Lean, who tell me they don't even like water. Right, Whoa. me too. Yeah. And I, the I, body I is water. made up of, the body is made up of what, 70% or 80% yeah. water? Yeah, it's about 75% water, that's right. And then the brain we're is born, 90% we're, water. We're born, we're born right. in water. Mm-hmm. Well, they in trouble. Exactly. Yeah, they in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> big but, time. Uh, yes, sir. They in trouble big time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Now, they drink sodas and they yeah. stuff like that, but water, they say they don't like. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Mm. Yep, I uh, heard that before, too. This all this involves staying alive because uh, you, if you're not healthy, the devil don't have to kill you. You kill yourself. That's right. That's right. That's what makes this so important. And what we're talking about, we might touch on this or touch on that or touch on this, but all everything that we're talking about is related. We're connecting the dots, or we're crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Right. No doubt about it. Now, when Chavez went to Cuba, because the Cubans have some of the best herbologists, um, it seemed like he got better, but if you're not following the protocol, like if you're in Cuba, you're getting good treatment, but when you come back home, if you're not getting that same treatment, or if you're trusting people that you shouldn't trust, Mm -hmm. because we know that all organizations have agents and uh, informants in those groups. I saw a movie one time, it was a martial arts movie, and uh, they were trying to kill a king. But the king had a system. He would let them taste the food before he ate it. That's right. I've seen that movie. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, you got to be very careful, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, any questions from the audience out there? <coughs> I told some people to call in. All right. Uh, um, all right. The call-in number is 626. 626- Four one four thirty five thirty five. That's six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Call on in if you want to get some um, get some um, answers for these questions here. If you got questions, comments? Call on in six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Come on, and call on in. Is there any information from the chat room? Any questions in the chat room in which that want to be um, that we need to go over? Or any comments? For those that's on the line, yeah, I got for those that have any questions, please call in. The area code is 626 414 3535. All right, we got a number here. We got area code 718. Oh. New York. New York in the house. Yo, peace. 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 My name, my name is Brother Chase. He's Brother Chase. Please. And the reason why I'm calling in is I just wanted to respond to you and uh, Brother Big Man and Brother L and to anyone else that happens to be tuned in on this frequency. Just to let you know that we are listening, we are involved, we are, you know, uh, appreciating this great communication that's being broadcast over the airway. Now, I want you to know that... Uh, uh, yes, I believe that uh, Big Brother is watching and listening and running interference on some of the things that you're saying. But I don't have any type of um, uh, opposition or, or con- conflicting ideas in what you're saying. I agree 100% with everything that you're saying, 
I, I, I appreciate the information about uh, Steve, Steve Copley, who was an integral part of the uh, community enlightenment in the 90s. Uh, it was it was according to him that we found out about the boule. That's right. And about many other of the secret uh, society connections. That's and right. Cap, cap, uh, you know what I'm so I just want to let you know that we are out here listening. That's it. I don't want to keep talking to him, to him myself on the radio. I just want to let you know that you're not working in vain. Oh, so we appreciate that, brother. brother. We definitely appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Yes, yeah, sir. Definitely um, for um, calling in and putting those connections together there and speaking up, you know, because that's what we want. We want people to speak up about these issues. And, um, of course, you know, these shows are dedicated to Brother Steve Coakley, and we want to have more shows dedicated to him because we find that this is necessary, you know, in order to, um, you know, to definitely deal with these issues, you know, and because Steve's not a legacy, and we can't let legacies fall by the wayside. That's why we also gave props to the war correspondent, Brother Dale Jones. Um, so, you know, um, also we spoke about, um, you know, talked about Ishimusha Bershango. You know, we got to keep giving props to these to these brothers who dedicated their lives to this information, getting this information to our people. Yeah. Uh, like I said in the first part, part one, that you don't have to agree with everything that a brother or sister say, right. but we say that we are civilized. So if you civilize, you act like you civilized. So in my travels, I've met Moors, Hebrews, Muslims, atheists, people that didn't even believe in God or didn't believe in anything. But I took the time to listen to what they were saying and believe me, you can learn, brother. You don't, you can't just judge a person by the way they look. Once you begin to talk to them, uh, you'd be surprised. And uh, sometimes it's even better to listen. You know, a wise man, uh, I think they said, seek knowledge and wisdom, but above all, seek understanding. And when you're able to understand what's going, when you're able to understand what's going on in the world with these assassinations, when you pick up the newspaper, you won't be tricked. And I appreciate Brother Chase calling in all the way from New York. Peace to that brother. Peace to Brother Chase, no doubt. All right, y'all. Um, we appreciate, um, definitely appreciate Brother L for coming on, giving his um, information. You know, we yes, big, brother brother big man. Oh, no problem at all. Yeah, for the, brother, for the big man, we definitely appreciate you for coming on again, and we're gonna keep doing this. You know, um, matter of fact, you gonna be our war correspondent. So anytime that we need uh-huh. to get into some issues, we are gonna bring brother big yeah. man on. You know, to get into them because um, this this definitely needs to be done. And um, like we said, to keep these things going, to keep. Yes, yeah. uh, brother. Um, no. uh, hmm? Brother Lee. Call, yeah. call me after the show. Okay, I definitely will. Yeah, call me after the show. And uh, the show's about to end in a little while, right? Right, we're getting ready to end it right now. Okay, I'm, I'm going to end my part in the words of Malcolm X. Go home in peace. Anybody put their hands on you, send them to the cemetery. Peace, brothers. <laughs> peace and <laughs> love, boy. Okay, <laughs> boy. Brother L, you got any closing remarks? Yes, sir, brother. Uh, we need to have more shows like these so we can keep uh, keep us on our toes, you know, because right. a lot of people in power don't like what we, we're talking about here. Right. You know, so, you know, but they can't stop because there's too many of us. It's, it's, uh, too much information is out now. Yeah, this is this is a new time, brother. You know what I'm saying? We done passed 20, um, December the, um, 21st, 2012, so ain't nobody worrying about any of this no more. No, the age of Aquarius. Right, we done left the um age of um of um Pisces what dealt with mortars. We ain't dealing with mortars no more. We're dealing with not, um those mm-hmm. who have knowledge. Yes, sir D. All right, we appreciate you, brother L Grand Sheik Professor, for coming on and checking us out every um Wednesday. Um my um my co host. And um of course we'll see everybody here next Wednesday at eight PM Eastern Standard Time. First World Order Radio Final League. Final League. We are on the air. 
No doubt. Somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows. Giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line 